Yep, Saturday the 16th of November 2013. Welcome along, Chris Redden, today's United Kingdom talk. I don't know if those of you watching the very beginning there uh, with this live, I don't know what possessed me to put a pink screen in there. Did, did you see that? Hang on a minute, where is it? I put this... Oh, it's just awful, isn't it? <laughs> Should be black. I'll, I'll, I'll fix that for next time. Where's my black? Blank image. There we are, black. That's better, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't fade to a pink screen, can you? Awful, awful. So I've been watching, uh, just before I came up uh, today, I didn't think I was going to be here today. Um, I keep suffering with uh, laryngitis, which is, it's not a sore throat, it's not a pain, but it's where your voice won't come out. You, you, you're you trying to push it out, and it won't come. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's awful. Awful. Anyway, it's 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 much better than it was yesterday. But it keeps coming and going. This laryngitis and it's most annoying, especially when you're at karaoke night. <clears throat> you know, and as the host, if you don't have anyone singing, you've got to sing. I I I, I use the term quite loosely, to be honest. When it comes to myself, I do try the odd song, songs I do. Uh, Mr. Blue Sky, we do Mr. Blue Sky. Sun is shining in the sky. We do Lovers in the Air. Lovers in the Air. Everywhere I look around. We do some ballads. Love on the Rocks. Oh no, don't love me in tears. Don't start me now. I've been in tears this week. I've been in tears this week. I went to see a certain film, but more of that later on. Okay. By the way, uh, karaoke tonight, um, Saturday, the. What is it again? 17th? Saturday, the 16th of October. 2013 karaoke I'm hosting at the Laurie Arms in Hammersmith. And tomorrow night on Sunday the 17th, start a brand new karaoke night in my old haunt, the Black Cap, in Camden Town. Please come along if you're in London. It's going to be great. We've got a massive stage there. Lots of lights. There's only a few of them work in mine, but never mind. I mean, it still looks good. There's loads of lights on the stage. We've got a fantastic sound system in there. It's always been good in there. And I've, I've been waiting for this one to come back to me, to be honest. I left it six years ago. Was it seven? Oh, I can't remember now. Just coming up to six or seven years ago, I left it. And uh, I've been waiting for the karaoke night to come back to me, and it has at last. OK, so we're going to be doing that Sunday nights between 8 and 10.30 from tomorrow. That's the 17th. Completely free entry. I mean, it doesn't get much better, does it? Free entry tomorrow. You come and sing. I'll push the buttons. That goes on till 10.30, so 8 to 10.30 for the karaoke. Bit of dancing from 10.30 to 12. And we've got a drag show on at midnight. And that's every single Sunday from next week. I think there's one of them that's missing because we're doing a big charity um, event on one particular Sunday. But I'll tell you about that um, as it comes along. All right. Now, are you with us live or are you Memorex and watching a recording? OK, have a look at your clock. If it's just coming up to five past twelve on Saturday the 16th of November 2013, you are indeed with us live. And you're very welcome. If it's any other time or any other day, you are watching a recording. But that doesn't matter because you're still welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome home. Come on in. Oh, that's another karaoke one I could do. Welcome Home by Peters and Lee. Did you know then? He was blind and she was very pretty. He used to play the piano and there was a twosome in the... 70s I think they were Peters and Lee in the 70s do you remember them I might do that one tonight actually if someone's down to karaoke tonight in the lorry arms in Amersmith remind me to try that one Peters and Lee and welcome home good morning to Terry H who joins us this morning from Leeds up to north good morning Terry Terry did you used to go in Queen's Court because uh, the manager of the Black Cap was running Queen's Court for a while I wonder if you knew him Dan, also known as Dan Steps Thomas, because he's a bit of a Steps fanatic. He gets very upset. In fact, he'd come up to me the other week at the end of the night with me wages. Well, I say that. You know you know what some of these managers are like. I, like, I say they come up to you, you know, you finish your job, and then you're running around for an hour trying to find them, trying to get your bloody money. Oh, it's awful, dear. She you work for people like that? I worked for one bloke once. His name was Ken. And I worked with him in a couple of places. And number one, the wages were extremely low. There's no way you could live on what he would or on what he paid you. 
and it will get... Oh, here comes the cat. Katie! Come on in, darling. You're coming in. Come on. Cat's coming to visit. Katie, where are you then? Oh, my God, what was that? Just a minute. Come in then, darling. <coughs> Come on, I'm here. Come in. Come on. All right, girl, what's up? You coming in here? She seems frightened to come in here sometimes. I don't know why. Do you not want to be on the telly to say hello to people? No? Okay, off you go. Please yourself. Miserable old cow. Honestly. What's wrong with these cats? Um, yes, I worked with this bloke, uh, for this bloke called Ken. And he was as tight fizzy. He was the worst one ever. You would finish your night doing your DJing. And then you'd go around. Uh, and go, All right, Ken, I'm just off out the door. All right, okay then. And he he wouldn't take that as a hint, or or he would probably more likely be ignoring you. Um, are you doing the um? Are you doing the um? What 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 what? It'd be like that. What what what? Are you doing the wages? Oh um, oh I haven't got anything on me at the moment. Um, can you come back in in twenty minutes? You know, I mean, it was the height of absolute rudeness. He really was. You could not get your money out of him. It was awful. He's not the only one around. Although I must say I don't work with anyone like that at all at the moment. That That's true. But I have in the past. And you've gone up and after you've done your job. Now we've got the wages. Oh, well, can you come back tomorrow? I haven't got anything on me till tomorrow. And the bloody pub's been open all night and the till's full up. Oh, it's it's absolutely shocking. I tell you, this bloke. Anyway, he's dead now. Not that I'm celebrating that fact, because I'm not. I'm just telling you, he's dead. But he was the tightest fisted one ever. He really was. Awful, awful. I mean, Dan usually makes me wait for mo no more than three hours. <laughs> Dan, have you got me? Oh, um, oh, oh, well, I'll be, I'll be back in a minute, and then you, he doesn't reappear, you know, for three hours. And anyway, usually I'm, you know, I finish there about three o'clock on a Friday morning. I'm lucky to get paid by nine, and then I leave there at nine o'clock, and I rush back here just to do the show. I haven't been asleep yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's what we're doing Sundays there, karaoke, uh, every Sunday, 8 to 10.30, and a bit of dancing and a drag show with Bag of Chips at midnight, every Sunday at uh, the Black Cat. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, I was there 18 years before, I think I told you this, and uh, I left in 2007. Okay, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so it would have been six years. I left in 2007, because um, it was time to go. Yeah, you have to know when it's time to go. Don't be pushed. Don't be pushed, because that's not nice. You, you know when it's time to leave somewhere, so I did. And a nice six-year break. I didn't think I would be back there, but... Um, it's funny how things turn out, and, and I'm very happy, very, very happy indeed uh, to be there. Good. Uh, Terry says, yes, I know Queen's Court is next to Fibre. Queen's Court is very popular with the lesbians. The trouble is they don't have a snooker table. <laughs> or do they fight instead? Oh, you never want to be involved in a lesbian fight. They're dangerous. I usually, I usually prefer lesbians around me to protect me from the massing crowds that want to touch me as I walk through audiences and things like that. <laughs> I must tell you, um, just before I came up the stairs this evening, I was watching uh, Children in Need from last night. Um, a five-hour five spectacular, which I condensed into about 30 minutes uh, with use of the uh, fast-forward button. And I've got to say, I know it's a charity event and all that. And, uh, you, you know, the serious side of it is they're raising money for charity. But I've got to be honest, I didn't watch one of the so uh, one of one of the sad stories. And it, when I say stories, they're not made up. You know, these are these are children in, in, in need of help for uh, many different reasons. You know, some are in hospices and they don't have very long to live and that sort of thing. But I've, I've got to be honest with you, I didn't watch any of the sob stories. The, not, they're not sob stories. Sob stories, are, I, I think sob stories are stories that you often come out with so that people feel sorry for you. Well, they're not sob stories. They are sad, true stories. 
you know little children that might be dying or or perhaps they've they've lost a parent or both parents or a limb or something like that and i didn't watch any of those whenever it got to one of those i quickly i hit the fast forward button and um i don't know i mean it's <sighs> did anyone else do that and I, I feel, now that I'm telling you about it, I, I feel quite bad about not actually watching the, the, the little stories that they had. Anyway, so uh, I saw that before I come up here. Um, ice skating, uh, at the beginning of the show, they had a, like, a camera in an ice skating rink <coughs> where a couple of presenters were and members of the public and all that were around and uh, just talking to the camera. And it reminded me of an ice skating thing I went on a couple of years ago, about two or three years ago, um, in London somewhere. They had this ice skating rink. I'm just trying to think where, it's, where it is now. It's, I think it's near the Aldwych, near the BBC Broadcasting House. So, is it Somerset House? Would it be Somerset House? It might be Somerset House where they have the um, ice skating. And each year they go into this big place. And all oh, Terry's just writing back. I wonder if he's going to tell me where this place is. <coughs> I don't know. Um, yes, uh, every year they have this ice skating rink set out in this big old mansion house type thing. It's all outside uh, around Christmas time. And you pay your money and you go ice skating. And uh, someone bought tickets. I didn't know they bought tickets. I I'd arranged to meet a friend for dinner. And then the day before he picks up the phone and rings me, he says, Oh, I've got a couple of tickets for the ice skating. I thought that would be something nice for us to do. Well, I mean, I was, I was horrified. No interest at all in ice skating. No, <laughs> honestly, you know, it's one of those things. Don't you hate that? I mean, I suppose, I suppose he, um, I, he, you know, it was all the best intentions. But I, I wish he'd had asked me first, because I would have told him no. Didn't want to go ice skating. Anyway, this day came and we went ice skating. It was quite late at night, I think about nine o'clock at night. Put the ice skates on. And there I was, you know, holding, <laughs> desperately holding onto the wall in the ice skating place and the barrier that goes round and he goes round and round of course he can ice skate i can't ice skate you know eventually i found <laughs> what i can only describe as a learning come children's play area <laughs> and i i tried to try to pulled myself round into that area and there was only about a dozen or so people a couple of little children and people who who were obviously like me who had no idea at all how to escape i mean don't ever compare me to torvia and dean <laughs> like, what's that Bellaria? oh i'm sick of hearing that aren't you don't they keep turning up everywhere don't they ice skating dudes torvia and dean i mean can we move on can we see someone young please you're probably thinking that while you're sitting there listening or watching this show, aren't you? Can we see or hear someone young? Anyway, so I went in this children's area and I just about managed to start going around <clears throat> um, without actually holding on to the thing. I thought, right, OK, well, let's give this a go now. So I went back out into the main area. Oh, I went straight over on my arse, didn't I? God, I, I and ice is hard. It's really hard. You fall over on the road on a summer's day and it's bad enough, or on the pavement, something like that. Falling on ice, it's so hard and horrible, and I hated it. I abs Anyway, I persevered, boys and girls. I fell over a few more times, but it was at one point I wasn't even holding on to the barrier. I was so pleased, so pleased with myself. But the other thing is with ice skating, even when you can um, go on there without actually falling over, but... There is the, the, the difficulty of uh, something very simple that you won't have any problem doing while you're walking or running, and that is stopping. How the hell do ice skaters stop? So I've now managed uh, to get around, you know, moving my legs just about very slowly, and then you kind of tip forward, then you tip back, then you tip forward, and then you go over your on your ass again, don't you? Anyway, just about managed to start going around, and I was, I, I got picked up speed. I must have been doing at least two miles an hour, at least. And then the barriers coming towards me, and I thought, right, okay, how do you, how do you stop? <laughs> very, very difficult indeed. Can't stop. Can't stop, I'm afraid, to save my life. Anyway, so I, eventually I came out on it, and my friend came in. He says, uh, oh, shall we go now, sweetie? Because he, he speaks, he's a bit of a lovey, you know. 
bit of a theatrical love him. Shall we go now, sweetie? I said, no, 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 you carry on. I'm quite happy sitting here watching everyone. Because I was in the little bit where you put your skates on and take them off again, you know, and, you, and there's a big window and then you can see everything going on. And I like to watch, I like to watch people. I'm a bit of a people watcher. So I said, that's all right. You carry on going around there. And, um, you know, I'll be happy in here. Are, are you sure? I said, yes, go on, go out there. So off he went and left me alone again, you know. I mean, how could you do that? Just left me alone sitting there. Any, any, anything could have happened to me in that little room. You know, people could have come up and spoken to me, but they didn't. And I find that happens quite a lot, to be honest. You know, if I'm out somewhere and I sit there alone, and I think perhaps someone might speak to me, and, and no one does. Oh, well. Never mind. Maybe they know that I've probably got laryngitis and I can't speak back to them. I think that must be, must be what it is. So they had the ice skating on there. Um, and there were some Asian students. I don't know if you noticed them right at the beginning of the show, in the first sort of half an hour. There were some Asian students, two boys, and they had the most beautiful clothes on, like, I suppose some sort of Asia, Asian um, formal wear, possibly. These things were bright blue with brass buttons. Oh, they look really good. Really smart and good, these Asian shoot students. Also on there, uh, we had a, 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 a mini Doctor Who episode. Is it called an episode? What do they call the small ones? Oh, Terry says, um, no, I was the same uh, fast-forwarding on the children in the need. They beg, which gets a bit too much. They'd been on the air for about an hour and a half and had raised £7 million. Terry Wogan then said, but we want more. Well... You know, they do, don't they? Trouble is, I suppose, if they say seven million, oh, we don't need any more, and people would stop um, uh, donating them, wouldn't they? I suppose. I, I wonder if anyone, you know, did you send any, Terry? Anyone send any money to that? Anyway, uh, so we had the Doctor Who episode, which I was quite excited about, and I was watching this downstairs just about a couple of hours ago, you know. And um, they had two Doctors on there. They had uh, Peter Tennant... And Matt, oh, what's his name? Is it Matt King? Bloody hell, I forgot his name now. Matt, Matt Brown, Matt King. Oh, I've forgotten his name. You know, the latest Doctor Who, the young one, the young skinny one, who overacts a bit, doesn't he? Oh, he does overact a bit, come on. Anyway, so they're both in it. And um, I was a little bit disappointed. It was about two minutes long and that was it. I was, I was expecting... A mini episode, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. It was about two minutes long. Very disappointing. But it was all right. And in this particular episode, uh, they both were, are wearing fezzes, which are those, like, maroon-coloured hats with a little tassel coming out of the top. <clears throat> and it reminded me of that excellent comedian Tommy Cooper, you might be a little bit too young uh, to remember Tommy Cooper. He was a, a very, very funny comedian. And he died on stage at the London Palladium years ago. What had happened, he was, he was in the middle of his act. And all of a sudden he fell on, collapsed on the floor. Well, people thought it was part of the act. And everyone's laughing. And um, this carried on for a while. And of course he didn't get up. And then all of a sudden it went a bit quiet and the curtains came down. He died. It actually died on... <laughs> he died on stage and no one had realised. I mean, but what a way to go. I mean, it's better than laying in a bloody hospital bed, isn't it, and going there, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? What a way to go in front of your adoring public. I think I'd like to go like that, to be honest. You know, while I'm in the middle of a, 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 a karaoke song, perhaps singing... What would be a suitable to song song to sing and die halfway through? Your suggestions, please. We have an email address. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you're with us live this morning, you can join in live. We have Skype, and that means it's um, if it's just coming up to 20 past 12... If it's 20 past 12 on uh, Saturday, the 17th of November 2013, then you are indeed with us live and you can join in live by either Skype. My Skype username being all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. All right, Skype username is Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. 
R E A R D O N, or local London telephone number 020 8133 6358. They will get you through straight to me on the big red phone, and we can have a chin wag on air. Or, of course, whether you're with us live or watching a recording, you can always join in by email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Fagash Leo says, David Tennant and Matt Smith. Of course, it's Matt Smith, not Matt King. Matt Smith is the uh, Doctor Who at the moment. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Oh, by the way, we've got the, the next... Um, so they had fezzes, yeah. Poor old Tommy Cooper died on the stage in front of everyone. Good way to go. I think it's a good way to go. Great comedian. Uh, talking of Doctor Who, of course, we have Doctor Who uh, 50th anniversary special next Saturday, the 23rd of November at 7.50pm. Unfortunately, I will not be able to watch that live because I'm uh, up in Coventry that night uh, doing some DJing up there. And I actually wanted to go and watch it at the cinema because it's in 3D, isn't it? It's in 3D in the cinema. I'd love to go and watch it at the cinema. I believe they're showing it in certain cinemas live on the night. I say live, you know, live as, as in at the same time as it's on the television. OK, um, whether or not they're going to be. Oh, what's that buzzing noise? Is that light? Uh, whether or not they're going to be showing it later in the cinema as 3D but not live perhaps uh, Sunday or during the week I, I hope so because I will um, uh, then go and watch it in 3D uh, at the cinema I need to perhaps uh, uh, Terry uh, uh, are you with us Terry could you see if it's on any cinemas is it advertised in the cinemas yet? actually the cinema listings tend not to come out before Thursday do they I'm kind of hoping that they do show it live and then you, you can go on another day during the week and watch it in 3D. And if that's the case, I won't watch it on the television. I'd quite like to watch it in 3D and have the, have the glasses on and all that, the 3D glasses, which are quite cool. Also on the show, uh, one, one Direction, did you see them? Prancing about the stage. Looking a bit older now, aren't they? They still look good, though, I think. One Direction. Zane. He's got a little bit of a beard now, I think, hasn't he? He's the one that looks quite Arabian. Very, very good looking. They're all good looking, aren't they, really? They're all good looking. Um, and one of the things I noticed with uh, when they were on the stage, and they seem to be doing this now to a lot of artists who are appearing on stage now, and that is while they're singing, they put the words up on the big screens at the back. Have you noticed that? They've got this, I don't know if it's green screen at the back or, or whether it is actually large uh, plasma type TV screens up there. But they keep putting the words to the songs at the back. And as they're singing, uh, what were they singing? Best song ever. Uh, best song ever. And it would come up on the back. Best song ever. I'm thinking it just doesn't look very good. I don't know why they keep doing that, putting the words up on the back there. Most annoying. So that was One Direction. Uh, Cheryl Cole, she popped up for a while to do a little, little, um, a little speech, didn't he? Oh, she's lost her looks, hasn't she? God's sake. I thought she had a wig on. Cheryl Cole. Did it look like a wig to you? She had an awful lot of hair. I don't know who done her hair, but she, I'm sorry, she's a bit past it now, darling. I'm sorry. They were, I think they were talking about trying to get her back on the uh, X Factor weren't they? But I think I think the time has passed, Cheryl Lovey. I think it has. We don't need to see Cheryl Cole on the telly anymore. No, it's all, all over. All over. All over. Uh, James Arthur was, I mean, it was a, it was like a, a parade of bloody Simon Cow stars, wasn't it, really? James Arthur was there. He sounded dreadful, didn't he? James Arthur. Oh, no, it just, just sounded awful. Um... Oh, Terry H says, he thought One Direction were a bit cocky. I've gone off them. Yes, they are now, aren't they? You know. And it's a shame when that happens. When It's a shame when you see someone go from, like, you know, quite quite reserved and a bit nervous to really cocky. You're, you're quite right, Terry. They, they are a bit cocky. But uh, come on, Terry, you wouldn't say no, would you? Eh? You wouldn't say no, Terry, would you? <laughs> I bet you've got pictures of One Direction all over your bedroom wall, haven't you? Eh? 
Have you? Uh, did, who's got pictures of their favourite pop stars on the wall? Do you remember? Those of you that are a bit older, whose pictures did you have on your wall? As you know, boys and girls, I have on the wall behind me my icon of all time, Mr. Barry Manilow. He's on the wall behind me in his picture of the November calendar. The November calendar. Which, incidentally, Wendy pointed out last week, she rushed off an email. I didn't see the email. Often, people um, put little messages on the YouTube wall. And I've got to be honest, I don't see them until it's too late. Okay? If you want to get a message into the show, the best way to do it is not Facebook, not YouTube, not Twitter. It's by email. Do it on the email, and it won't be missed. Okay? It absolutely will not be missed. All right? Um, that's at chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk send your messages please do use the email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk some people send them on Facebook I might see them I might not then I might see them and I'm, I'll, I'll print it off when I get home and then I forget to do it if you do it on that email it will not get lost or forgotten saying that <laughs> I know that James sent me an email last week and I, I've lost it somewhere James I'm sorry I don't know if you're with us live this, live this morning, James, but um, yes, I, I know you sent something and I've accidentally deleted it. OK, so please send that again. Um, we've got a let me just put the I should have my. Uh, oh, where's the uh, where's the text on there? Um, is it that one text? Is that it? Oh, there is. Oh, well, let's just shove that up there. Uh, is that on there? There we are. That's it, OK? Don't forget that Skype Skype username, Chris Reardon, all one word, and phone in number 20 uh, Yes, there's all these Simon Cow singers on there. Was Sunita there as well? I think I saw Sunita on there. Terry says, no, I wouldn't say no. I'm not telling you what calendar I've got on my wall. Oh, is it Fireman or someone like that, is it? Fireman. I saw the weirdest thing in, in, in Italy, in Rome, while I was there. And the Vatican, they have a calendar of priests. They're, no, they're not topless or anything like that. Oh, come on, please. But they are, they are all really good-looking, young, good-looking priests. You can actually buy a calendar, and that's not a lie, a calendar in the Vatican of priests. You know... So what posters have you got up on your wall, boys and girls? Let me know on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Ladies, older ladies, perhaps you used to have pictures of various pop stars. Did you have the monkeys up there or the Beatles? McFly? They're good looking, aren't they, McFly? I've always liked them. I like the one with the glasses. He's married now, isn't he? Fancy getting married before he even had a date with me. I can't believe it. He wouldn't have got married if he'd had, had a date with me first, I'm sure. I'm sure that would be the case. Huh? <laughs> my sister had pictures all over the wall and albums. Gary Glitter. Gary Glitter, I know. If she'd have only known then what he was like. Bloody old perv that is, isn't it, eh? Pedo man, Gary Glitter. She had them all over her wall. She hasn't got them now, let me tell you that now. Dirty old man, that is nasty, nasty. Um, going back to the children in need, my favourite part of it has got to be Catherine Tate, where she did a little sketch in Holby City. I love Catherine Tate. I don't know why she stopped doing her shows. It might be just the case that um, she, she sort of, you know, well, I've done that now, I want to move on. Of course, she was in Doctor Who for a while as well. She was very, uh, for me, the best Doctor Who character was Catherine Tate. Uh, assistant was Catherine Tate. Love her. And she did Nan, who was in a hospital bed, didn't she? On the show last night. So that was my best part of it. Um, Terry Wogan, of course, hosting very cool, calm and collected. He had quite a, a few um, uh, co hosts. You had the dreadful Cat Dealey. <laughs> what, what is she all about, eh? And uh, worse than that, that awful DJ, I can't even remember his name for a minute, that awful DJ from Radio 1, the one who does the breakfast show. Supposed to be best friends with Harry Styles, isn't he? From One Direction. And there's just something about him that, that I, don't, I don't like. 
Really isn't. And he had awful hairdo as well. Awful, awful hairdo. What's his name? The bloke on Radio 1. Someone tell me, please. Come on, Fagash Leo was with us this morning. All the way down there in Hove. Hello, Leo. Hello, Leo. How are you this morning, my darling? On this very cold day. Have we done half an hour already? Christ, where does that go? Anyway, so that was... Um, <coughs> As I say, that was the uh, Children in Need concert. Uh, uh, also, uh, another programme. Oh, here she goes. Fag Ashley was answering. Uh, this is always someone there if you're not quite sure of an answer. Come on, Terry, tell us who you've got on your wall. Is it posters of me? I wonder if anyone's got pictures of me on their wall at home. Do, do... <laughs> Do you think so? I must check this actually to see if there's a new Barry Manilow calendar for next year. Uh, Nick Grimshaw, thank you, Terry. Nick Grimshaw is the bloke on Radio One. Oh, it just, it just doesn't do it for me. Really doesn't do it for me. No, not my cup of tea. Another programme I've been watching is uh, North Korea, which was on Channel Four. I think that was on Thursday night. It was about the goings on in North Korea. Of course, uh, you know completely cut off from the rest of the world and uh, how certain people uh, over there think that the regime is starting to to um, crumble will it or won't it don't know there were some awful pictures of people um, there they haven't got anything to eat and they live in the open it's just dreadful and that's one of those very, one of those really cold countries in the winter isn't it North Korea huh? and all the money is kept with you know the elite but they are, people are starting to argue back to the police when they're arrested, rather than just accepting it. Uh, if you get taken to um, uh, to be punished somewhere, dreadful punishment, like be people are beaten up and kicked. There were these films, secret films. I don't know who made the films, but there were these secret films of people in these little rooms being beaten and kicked on the head because they'd done things wrong. Awful, awful. So that was the North Korea um, thing. Uh, Fagash Leo says she's okay, except me bits are a bit frozen. Yes, a bit frozen. Well, I haven't turned the heating on yet, Leo. Absolutely, seriously, I still have not turned the heating on. Indeed, on today's show, I was hoping to show you a little video. I was going to make a little video during the week <coughs> of a, a heater. Actually, the Daily Mail has now beat us to it. It was in the Daily Mail this week, apparently. And it was a heater made out of plant pots, and it works. I've got one in the bedroom. I've made one in the bedroom, and it works. It works so well. I haven't turned the heating on yet. Not yet. Although next week, I think we might be into minus next week. Minus freezing. So I think it might. the heating might be going on a little bit next week, boys and girls, just to keep the wheat pipes from freezing. And the cat comes in the room. Cat sleeps with me as well there. She's moved back into the bedroom for winter. Bless her heart. She left, she left the bedroom... Um, around July when it started getting really hot and I haven't seen her back and she's the last few nights she's crept back in and she's on my bed in the morning waiting for affection and love I wait for affection and love as well but it doesn't seem to come from anywhere but never mind that's the way it is um uh Vagesh Lil says Catherine Tate Bernard Cribbins and David Tennant have done a Buzzcocks special this week Cribbins is great you see I don't like those that Buzzcocks those panel things where they're all sitting around and trying to be it just doesn't do it for me I've become a right miserable old git sometimes haven't I Vagesh Lil I just like the old stuff Dad's Army Are You Being Served that's on every day at the moment on BBC Two are you watching that I love it Mrs Slocum and her pussy which had kittens on yesterday's show. Did you see it? A pussy has had kittens. More pussies. Little pussies coming out of big ones. Isn't that fantastic? I love the animal kingdom. I really love the animal kingdom. Now, um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, the reason I, I wasn't able to do the little film was because I had the laryngitis. I was supposed to do it yesterday. This little film is going to uh, do uh, audio as well, of course, uh, of, of the plant pot heater. But haven't done it yet because of my laryngitis. Although I, didn't, I actually didn't think I'd be here today because I needed to rest my voice for obviously tonight's job and tomorrow night's um, uh, first karaoke at the Black Cat. But it came back this morning. I thought, well, let's. Uh, I, got, I woke up about, about quarter to nine. And, la, 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 la. Because, uh, you know, I don't know what sort of person you are when you get out of bed. I jump out of bed. 
and I throw my arms up in the air and I sing loudly. La 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 la. You don't believe me, do you? No, I'm not like that at all. I'm not at all. I open my eyes. Oh, I don't want to get out of bed. But I, I'm not someone who can lay in bed for a long time and do nothing. I know a lot of people can do, especially the um uh, the long term. Uh, unemployed who want to be unemployed because you know let's be honest there are a lot of those there are people unemployed who want a job I know I know that right but there are also long term some long term unemployed who don't want to work <clears throat> and they get up like three or four o'clock in the afternoon and even then they don't want to get out of bed I'm not that like that I do I wake up once I wake up I, 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 I try to get up and I I kind of <laughs> I put a little finger out at the top of my cover and see how cold it is and I wiggle it around and the only thing is as soon as the cat realises I'm awake then she starts meow meow and she walks up the bed because she's usually on the end she's sleeping at the end she, she moves at the moment at the moment she's on the end of the bed and she walks up the bed meow meow and then sits there looking at me willing me to get out to feed her she does Katie the cat so I then I, I get out of bed and I hobble because I've still got the bad feet. You know, that just goes on and on, the bad feet. I believe they are getting better very, very, very slowly. I don't think they'll be right by Christmas. I'm kind of hoping within the next six months they might be back to normal. They're certainly not as bad as they were six months ago, but it's a very, very long-term thing, these, these bad feet of mine. Um... So then the first thing I do is I, I hobble over, because that's when it's worse, when I get out of bed. I hobble over to the toilet and get rid of my ex excess liquids. You know, I flush the toilet for the first time, because I might have got up during the night, but I only flush the toilet once. After I've, after I've gone to bed, I only flush the toilet when I get back up. So I might have used it three or four times by then. There's no smell. No, there isn't a smell. My, mate, my best mate, Ronnie, thinks I'm disgusting and dirty. Oh, well, sod him. He's not paying the bills, is he? You know, make me laugh. These people with less, little bit less money than me, they seem to have money to throw away, dear. They're not willing to throw, willing to, to save a bit here and save a bit there. Look at me, no heating on yet. But maybe next week when we go to minus, I might flick it on for ten minutes. I might just do that. I might flick that heating on for ten minutes next week when it goes minus because I don't want my pipes to freeze. <laughs> you can't have frozen pipes, dear. Now, where was I going with that story? Was it the heater? The flower pot heaters? Yeah, I'll try, I'll try and do it for next week, OK? Now, um, <clears throat> as well as seeing the... Um, what was it called now? Children in Need thing. Did you see the concert? Uh, Children in Need Rocks. I think it was called. Oh, yes, Terry says, if it's yellow, let it mellow, yeah. That, that, that's the thing. If you use the toilet, just go wee. You don't always need to flush it. Although I do recommend you have something smelly in there. You know, either one of those things. I'll tell you what, I've got those things now where you... Um, I've only just started buying these. It, it, it's like a... Uh, let me just get it, just a minute. And I can describe it then. One minute. So I'm hobbling a bit now, to be honest. By the way, I bought some lovely new chumpers this week, all off eBay. I've got a, uh, I have got this one on there, and someone said it was a bit Christmassy. It's, there's no, it's, I don't know, it's just a pattern on it. I've got a lovely jumper, and another one here, which I bought all off eBay. Okay, they're new off eBay, and I think one was about ten quid, and one was twenty quid. Lovely jumpers I bought. Um, uh, one's one's navy blue. I've got another eight navy blue down, one downstairs, like an army type, you know, with the patches on the sleeves and on the, um, and on the shoulders. And the one I'm wearing today has got nice patterns on it, because I needed some new jumpers. I want to buy some more jumpers when I'm in the States. When I go to the States in January, my nephew, Jimmy, who's, who's counting the... He rung up yesterday. What was it? I spoke to him yesterday. Yes, and he was saying, oh, only, only 50, 58... Was it, was it yesterday? Or it might have been Tuesday. I can't remember. He rung up. They spoke to him this day, uh, one day this week. 
and um, he he was saying, oh, only 58 days to America. He's counting down the days, bless him. I'm going to give that boy the best holiday ever. I'm so excited to be able to give him the opportunity to give a young person a holiday like this. It's going to be fantastic. I've been to Disney before, right? And first time's fantastic, second time's all right, and then you just, you go, and it's it's good, but it's never like the first time. Right? So to take someone with you, you will see it all again through their eyes. And I just want him to have a good time. We've got Disney, we've got Universal, SeaWorld. I must be honest, I wouldn't go to SeaWorld on my own, because I actually think it's a bit cruel. I think it's cruel to have such a, a big animal. Uh, you may think it's a quite a big pond he's in, but he shouldn't be in any sort of pond. Or, or enclosure should be out in the open seas i think it's cruel so i probably wouldn't go to somewhere like that on my own but you know if my nephew wants to go he will go and that's it <clears throat> um i am actually going to see barry manilow that's the reason i booked the holiday uh, i bought the ticket and then started booking the holiday and then he showed an interest and i said do you want to come and he said yes so so i'm taking him as well i gotta say um i i i, I want i want to see barry and we're going to get there on the Monday. The concert is on the Saturday. Um, but it does mean, because he didn't, didn't want to see Barry, it does mean leaving him alone for a night. Uh, he would be all right in the room, I'm sure he will. But if he's too nervous, then I won't go and, I won't go and see Barry, you know, because uh, you can't leave the boy alone um, if he's a bit nervous. Do you know what I mean? So um, hopefully it'll be all right. You know, I would like to go and see Barry, but you know, if, if not, then it doesn't matter too much because I'll be able to see him twice uh, here in... Um, London when he comes to London and uh, I just mentioned to you um, uh, the the other thing I watched on the telly uh, was the Children in Need concert and they had all these different people on there and there he was Barry Manilow was there and the highlight of the entire concert has got to be Barry singing Could It Be Magic with Robbie Williams and Gary Barlow Really, really. Everyone thinks Gary Barlow's really good looking. I think he's all right. I think he'd be a good friend, Gary Barlow. He seems quite genuine, doesn't he? Do you think? You know, a lot of celebrities, they don't seem genuine, do they? Like Cheryl Cole, for example. Uh, the Spice Girls. I bet they'd say one thing to you and they'd mean something. Else. Do you know what I mean? The entire cast of The Only Way is Essex. Not that I don't watch that anymore. Christ, I, couldn't, I just couldn't stand it any longer. I, I forced myself to watch it, really. Just talk about it on the show. I, just, I can't bring myself to even look at it now. Those ugly, ugly, fake, fake, fake faces that are on there. I just can't watch it anymore. Um, so that was the highlight of the show. Barry Manilow and uh, uh, Robbie Williams and Gary Barlow doing Take That Together. And Barry was playing his piano. He looked fantastic, Barry. He's hobbling around a bit now, um, but that's because, of course, he's had uh, he's got a, a replacement hips, and and uh, I, I just get the feeling he's got quite a lot wrong with him, to be honest. And he's um, he wants to give as much to to the public as he can before he can't anymore. Perhaps shall we say? Do you know what I mean? Excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. Oh, a notice. Oh. I've got a tissue, just a minute. Let me just mute this sound while I blow my nose. Because I am like a foghorn when I blow my nose. Don't know about you. So that was a Children in Need concert. This is the toilet thing I've got. I've, I'm, I've got these toilet things now. And what it is, you take the cap off. And I love... Oh, it's a lovely smell. I don't know what this one is. Oh, I've got, got it on my nose now, haven't it? It's like a, like some sort of floral smell. Anyway, so it's got this. You, you you must take the top off first. If you don't take the top off and do it, then it ten, this this whatever it is, this like gel stuff, sticks to the bottom and you never get it off again. And you you push that onto the toilet, onto the side of the toilet. Push the button down and and push it through one more. And um, and it and it sticks to the side of the toilet. Very good. I don't know why it looks like one of those tampon, tampon applicators, doesn't it? Like a large one. <laughs> what do I know about those? Oh, I've seen those about it. 
I'm a man of the world. I've seen these things. Tampon applicator. That's it. <laughs> oh, Timmy. Now, uh, do you know the whole house at the moment is filled with the smell of casserole? Oh, have we got some messages here? So, just a second now. Uh, oh, there she is. Wendy's with us this morning. When he says, Good morning. Oh, where's the message gone? One minute. Oh, there was. Should have been a message. Uh, Wendy, I don't see your message. Or maybe it come on the email. One minute. One minute. Is it there? There it is. Morning, Chris. Yes, I remember Peters and Lee. Remember them appearing on Top of the Pops. Yes. Oh, they were good. Very popular. And what, other, what else did they do? Don't stay away too long. Something like that. Do you remember that one? I'm sure you do, Wendy. I've got, I've got a little, little message from Wendy to read out later on. Yes, the whole house at the moment is filled with the smell of something bubbling away in my slow cooker. Got a nice casserole today. Onions, peas, roast onion gravy, mushrooms and corn pieces in there. But the only thing is, I've, I do, when I use the slow cooker, I've learnt now to put a, um, a tray, to put it all on a tray underneath. Right? Because what tends to happen is that it, it bubbles. I always put too much blooming liquid in it and it bubbles over. So I've got a, a tray at the moment downstairs covered in gravy and that'll be ready just as I finish the show later on. Very much looking forward to that. Thank you very much. And it was... Um, Telling uh, the chef, a uh, uh, young chef who works at the Mayflower, where I do a quiz on Tuesday night. They do food as well. They're wonderful meals in there. If you ever come to London, go to the Mayflower pub in Rotherhithe. OK, I do the quiz there on Tuesday nights between um, 8.30 and 10.30. Uh, but people, what they tend to do is they book a table and they come in at about 8 o'clock and they have a meal before they do the quiz. Um, and they are the biggest meals you've ever seen in your life. They really are. You will not go hungry after a meal in the Mayflower. I promise you that. I promise you that. Anyway, I talked to the young chef in there, and I was saying that I've got this slow cooker, and he says, "Well, how, how long? Do, how long would what do you make in there?" So I said, "For example, I do a stew." He said, "How long do you put that in?" I said, "Well, I get in from work, so last night would have been about four o'clock. Got in at four o'clock in the morning, and I put all my stuff in there. Cut up. I had oh my onion. My eyes were stinging last night." After I'd cut the onions, because I cut the onions up, the carrots and everything, put it all in, switch it on, fill it with liquid and go to bed. And a bit of gravy, roast onion gravy powder and go to bed. But I went to bed and my eyes were still stinging. I should have washed them out first, really. I was going like this in bed. I had trouble sleeping, really. Um, and I said, well, we're usually about 11, 10, 11, 12 hours, something like that. When, when you know, uh, today it'll be probably more like 10 hours. He said, oh, that's too long there. He says, you only want to do that three or four hours. I said, what, in a slow cooker? He said, yeah, it's, surely it can't take longer than that. I don't know if he's not used one or not, but I always put my stuff in for about nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours sometimes. It's beautiful when it comes out. Sometimes it's a bit too runny, so I put some of that um, gravy thickener stuff in. It's like a white stuff, McDougal's. Do you know that stuff? Like you just sprinkle it in on top, stir it up, and it all thickens up. Oh, it's lovely. Lovely. It's what Ashley asked. I said, well, I've done a chilli con carne in there. Obviously without the beef, so it's just just chilli. Con carne is the beef bit, so it's does, doesn't chilli. He said, what do you put in there? I said, well, there's onions, peppers, um, loads of garlic. I seem to become addicted to garlic recently. I keep putting garlic in everything. Oh, I love it. I mean, no wonder people are standing back from me when I start talking to them. You know, they kind of, I've noticed that people are taking a step back now when I talk to them. <laughs> also when I go to kiss them you know 10 years ago I'd go to kiss them and their heads would go forward and you know their arms would come around me now I notice I put my arms around them and they kind of you can feel them kind of pushing you back again do you know what I mean or you go to kiss them and the heads and the heads go back it's very hurtful and it's one of those things that you get when you get older Terry maybe it's already is it already happening to you Terry I don't know are people already <laughs> taking a step? It's either that or the garlic. And I put in this corn mint stuff. 
and uh, chili powder. And when I said chili powder, because he's a young chef, when he said, what's his name? Ian, I think he's from South Africa. When I put in the chili powder, he said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, well, what's, what's wrong with that? And he's like, he said, no, use a real chili. I said, well, I, I don't know what to do. What, what, what do you do? He said, get one chili, chop it up into small pieces, chuck that in, that replace the chili powder with that, and that'd be much better. I said, well, I said, Are they, I, I think I already put chilies in. He says, he says, um, I said, they're, they're big fat things and they're different colours. He said, no, you're putting in peppers. I said, oh, is that not the same? He said, no, chilies, long, thin things. And I said, ah, yes, I've seen those in Waitrose. I said, how many of those do I want? Two? He said, oh, no, 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 one. Only put one in. Whatever you do, only put one chilli in. Because I do tend to overdo the spices sometimes. I chuck this chilli powder in. And it's quite nice and hot, but he said a fresh chilli would be much better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that again. Uh, probably next week I'll do that. I'll do, I'll do a chilli with, with real a real chilli in it. Yes, quite excited about that. Uh, Terry says, don't talk to me about dating lads. Think I'm going to be single. Stopped looking. Oh, you as well. Oh, there's no hope for us, is there, Terry? And we, we're, just, we're just reduced to, 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 uh, to playing with gadgets and watching things on the telly. No one wants us. We are unwanted and unloved. We are orphans. We are orphans because my mum and dad are gone. I'm an orphan. I need to be. I need to go to an orphanage. That's what I need. I need to go and live in an orphanage. I'm an orphan. Talking to mums and dads, going. I'd like to dedicate this program to my mum, because it will be on Monday the 18th. Uh, she will have gone air 13 years. 13 years ago, my mum will have died um, on Monday. Let me tell you, it goes so quickly. So, so very quickly. It really does. I mean, I, I can still see pictures of my mind of her funeral um, when everyone was standing around and I gave out some flowers and people from work turned up as well, which was really nice. So 13 years ago, Mum, I miss you. My mum was my soulmate and my friend. I don't think you realise how much until they've gone possibly maybe that's why i can't find a soulmate because she was it she was them maybe i don't know so mum the show is dedicated to you all right Mwah. i've got a little mass for her down at saint joseph's in uh, Brackle tomorrow now um before we do a couple of emails i just want to recommend a film to you boys and girls I went to the cinema uh, Thursday with my best mate Ron and uh, we went to see Philomena with the wonderful Dame Judy Dench. Is she a dame? Or you might be just Judy Dench. Oh, I can't remember now. Judy Dench, anyway. We went to see Philomena. This film you have got to see. It is very powerful. Take a box of tissues. Really very good. We'll not tell you what's going to happen in the film. Please do not read any reviews or anything like that. That's going to give the story away. Just go and see it. And it's about this woman who had to give away her child when she was a young girl herself because she became pregnant, uh, had the baby, and uh, the baby was uh, adopted. And the woman, Judy Dench, is now 50 and is looking for her child. I'm going to leave it there. That's the only bit I'm going to tell you. That's the basis of the story. Please go and see Philomena. You will love it. Absolutely love the film. Went with my best mate, Ron. And of course, as you know, we don't buy food in the cinema. We certainly don't. Dear me. It's like four quid for a bag of bloody Maltesers. I don't think so. So anyway, so we stopped off at Domino's Pizzas um, before because they were doing a two for one offer. So we got a couple of large pizzas from there and we took them in, took them in in carrier bags. I said, um, while we're in the car, because I, I, I'm driving her now all the time, OK, I, I'm not getting in Ron's car anymore because I just don't like his driving. He's going to have an accident. He will absolutely have an accident at one point and his boyfriend. 
terrible dri- in my mind they ter- of course in their mind they're fantastic drivers uh, but to me they drive too fast too close to cars in front of you they cut across lanes I'm not getting in the car over anymore so now I drive everywhere so when he says oh well, I'm coming over uh, we'll go out I say well we'll take my car you know, I haven't actually said yet I haven't actually said yet that I'm not getting into your car because you don't drive because I don't like your driving. I haven't said it. He knows I don't like the driving, but I try and keep my mouth shut. But when you're sitting next to someone in a bloody car and you're scared, it's difficult to keep your mouth shut, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Has that ever happened to you before? You've been in a car somewhere, quite, you know, a little bit worried about the driving. It is scary. But I try and keep my mouth shut, which is difficult for me, as you well know. So anyway, so we stopped off at Domino's, picked up a couple of pizzas. And while we're in the car, I said, well, put those pizzas. I, all, I was already prepared for the pizzas, you see. I said, put the, put the pizzas in a bag and put another bag over the top of them so they can't be seen. Anyway, so um, this was just after he visited the dentist because he had a visit at the dentist. So he went to the dentist well, and he came out the dentist. I was about to go and order the pizzas. And then he came out. He was only in there 10 minutes. Very quick in the dentist. He goes to the same <coughs> dentist as me now. I hope they don't use the same tools. Uh, oh, no. I hope they're not using the same tools in the dentist's on his mouth as they use on mine. I don't want to bury those bloody tools. Put them in, incinerate them, dear. Take them down to the local crematorium. Chuck them in with a couple of bodies. Get rid of them, dear. Those tools, once they've been used on mine, mate. I'm not having things like that off his in my mouth. No, thank you. Anyway. So uh, he come out, and then we ordered the pizzas. And we were in the car, we thought, well, we'll have these in the car. Then I looked at the watch, and it was five minutes past the time the film was meant to start. It was on at ten past twelve. I said, well, we'll have to go. He said, what time's it start? Ten past. He said, well, it's only quarter past now. He said, they don't start for 20 minutes because they have all those adverts. I quite like the adverts in cinemas, though, don't you? And all the trailers and all that business. Anyway, so we set up straight away. I said, right, put that in the bag and put the bag on the top. It was just put them in a the bag. And we got there about 25 past 12, it was. And um, we dashed in. And he put them in the bag, but he hadn't put the other bag over the top. I said, oh, we'll risk it. You know, if they take them off us, they take them off us. And that's all there is to it, isn't it? You know, these, um, these pizzas. But they didn't, didn't say a word. So we went in there and I thought, well, we've got a couple of pizzas. I also had a couple of small bottles of Lucasade in there, but I fancied a cup of tea. So I went to the um, uh, the desk uh, in the cinema and I said, well, have two teas, please. <laughs> you know, and I got my fiver out. And I thought, well, two teas won't be too bad. So we've got two standard cups of tea. Four pounds fifty. Jesus Christ. Four pounds fifty for two bloody cups of tea. So I won't be buying any of those in there again either. I shall be taking in a flask. Thank you. How can you charge four pound fifty for two standard size cups of tea? It's taking a mick, isn't it, eh? I mean, it really is. But they, I'm sure they do themselves. Because other people were sitting there, you know, they'd bought their own food and, and cans of drinking and things like that. If they sold them less, then people would buy them there. Why can't they see that? Surely they can see that. Or even they could try it out. So one day a week they have uh, film, I don't know, whatever, you know, Philomena with cheap food today. You can get those nachos and things like that much cheaper. Hot dogs. I mean, people have hot dogs. I don't eat hot dogs. I used to love hot dogs. And then I found out what was in them. When I finish the show today, you look it up on the internet what they make hot dogs out of. You will never go near one again. <laughs> they do do corn hot dogs, and they taste exactly the same. It's the spices and all that they put in to make them taste nice. They do hot dogs on a Coke for about nine quid. I mean, <laughs> you know, you've got to be mad to buy food at the cinema. So we went in with our pizzas, and we sat there, watched the wonderful film, and um, that was it. But two teas for £4.50 was a bit much. So I, I reiterate again... Please, please go and see Philomena at the cinema. Don't read all about it. Just go and see it. Really good, touching film. An, an unexpected end. An unexpected end, OK? Not telling you anymore. <clears throat> all right, then. Uh, just the one email today, then. Oh, no, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, we've got a, a little bit of a chat from uh, Cyber John. 
who now sends in a regular little bit of a uh, an MP3 for us to listen to. So let's hear what Cyber John has got to say to us. Oh, uh, come on! Hi, Chris. I have a dab radio, and I usually listen to BBC Radio 4 in the morning. I flip over to 5 Live or LBC if I am in London, or when there's nothing of interest on 4. Or I will switch to something else when a politician turns up to be interviewed and starts coming out with the same old phrases such as going forward and the equally useless word robust in every second sentence. But horror of horrors, what happens at 8.30? 5 Live flips over to yesterday in Parliament. Now. It has been our democratic right to listen and even watch the proceedings at the Court of Westminster for 300 years or more. But I, and I guess a large slice of the population, do not want to hear a bunch of mainly geriatric barons and bishops blathering on about unfathomable amendments to sections of some inconsequential white paper. It is my suspicion that the only people who want to listen to Parliament are reporters and politicians themselves. I would stick it on if they called each other liars and had fights like in other legislative places. Now that I would pay to watch. Imagine Peter Mandelson and John Prescott in a three round all out action wrestling bout. They could even have superhero costumes. Peter could be the mental man. That guy could read the telephone directory and it'd still sound like a horror movie. As for Prescott, well he'd be two jabs of course. Get it? I made that one up myself. Anyway back to dab radio. I do not want the BBC flipping me over to spiritless, dried up and self-important witterings. The House of Lords just rubber stamps everything that the civil servants push through the Commons anyway. As for the disgraceful caterwauling of what passes for political discussion in Prime Minister's question time, don't get me started. You know, for years, the so-called Right Honourable 600 odd, and some of them are very odd, members of that grandiose mother of parliaments put the kibosh on TV cameras filming PMQs, probably through fear of what the public would do if we saw all that juvenile and belligerent yarbooing. Maybe they predicted a riot, but we, the public, let them get away with it, and now they use that Wednesday slot to project a vainglorious babble at us. Of course, they were always the model of solemnity when voting for their immodest pay rises. Politicians. <laughs> Shut up. That's better. <laughs> Thank you, Cyber John, for your little uh, words or your little pearls of wisdom on the show today. It was a very, very short one today. Uh, John, only two and a half minutes. I bet you rushed that one today. DAB Radio, um, I've got one in the bathroom. It's sort of set to LBC, really. <clears throat> I never understand why... <coughs> oh, don't say the voice is going again. It is, you know. <coughs> uh, uh, I've never seen why... I uh, understood why internet radios are not pushed more. They're really good. You've got Wi-Fi in the house. You can get thousands and thousands of stations and, indeed, podcasts on the internet radios. But they're so... They're not cheap. They're, like, you know, over £100, I think, most internet radios. But far, far superior. You can get so many more stations. Um, I have found, and I've, I've, I had a, a, a DAB radio in the car. I think, I, oh, it's here somewhere. One minute. Is it here? <coughs> oh, where's that movie? Oh, here it is. Here it is. I, I actually got this for my old car. It's a pure highway internet radio. Tiny little thing. And the idea is it, it sits on your car windscreen or something like that and, 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 and you've got an area which sticks to the window and, 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 and you've got DAB radio. But I found, because I'm, I listen a lot to LBC, the coverage was nowhere near as good as the coverage on FM radio. I mean, it really wasn't. And in the end, I just took it out. It was also a bit of a bloody pain, really, whenever you wanted this. Because, of course, you can't leave anything like this in the car. You know, they, they, they'd have a window straight, smashed straight away and bits and pieces dragged out of there. So I didn't, um, uh, so I took it out in the end. It was a bit of a waste of money. Uh, no, I don't rate DAB radio at all. Not at all. 
Internet radio is, is the way to go. And of course, now we're getting free 4G and all that all over the country. Internet radios will start working properly in the cars as well, which is a great thing. I do wonder sometimes, John, how many people watch that Parliament channel that they've got. You know, do, do, you, do you ever see that Parliament channel? No, I didn't think so. Prime, Prime Minister's Question Times, um, with Margaret Thatcher, they were really good. Because she wouldn't take any of it, would she? I have a feeling, although it, it, I, I don't expect it will happen, but uh, I reckon Nigel Farage... If he was to ever become Prime Minister, he'd be good at Prime Minister's Question Time, don't you think? <laughs> All right, then. Finally, uh, a couple of emails here from uh, Wendy, who sent this in last week, actually. And uh, she was telling me um, that she'd posted a couple of bits and pieces on the YouTube link. But as I say, I, I, I don't see those. OK, the best way always to send a message into the show is use the email okay chris at united kingdom talk dot uk if you put it on facebook i might see it and then i'll forget about it always use the email and <clears throat> wendy sent this last week hi chris just finished watching your show the cool thing about it being live is that i can take a break and see to john that's her husband or whatever i can pause it and go back to it how cool is that now i didn't know you could do that so even if you're watching the show live, you can hit pause and it will pause me. And then when you let it go, it will pick up from where you paused it. So then it's not so much live for you, if you see what I mean. But that, that's great. I didn't even know you could do that. I love it. Of course, then it's not exactly live as such because I'm a bit behind. She says, you missed a couple of my messages. And one is that your calendar is on October, you naughty man. Uh, yes. Last week, I did, I did uh, notice that in the end, um, the little hole at the top of the calendar is now broken. So behind, it's actually stuck up with a bit of tape, which you can't see, which is kind of under the United Kingdom Talk sign that I've got hanging behind me there. So that's what happened. The tape came loose and uh, it just came down. All right. You didn't me mention Barry was on Children in Need rocks next week. So that was that, that's obviously happened now. Tut tut, she says. Are your asthma? Because I had a, a bad, um, my asthma, uh, what do you call it, sucking thing. What is it? Asthma reliever. Well, it didn't seem to be working very well for, for a couple of days last week. My chest was tight and it wasn't releasing. Wendy says, I'm just wondering, does your doctor's surgery have a chest clinic as we do at mine? Well, funny you should say that I've got a appointment on Thursday with the asthma review, which I have to have once a year. So I shall mention to her that I had these uh, couple of problems. One thing I wanted to suggest, if I may, is that since you asked about Symbicort, I have had asthma since I was about eight years old and I had been using uh, Salamol or Ventolin, as it's sometimes called, since then. I went to the chest clinic and saw a nurse and she told me that I was overusing the blue inhaler and she prescribed Symbicort to be used alongside the blue inhaler. Uh, is that the brown one? Because I've already got the brown one. I use that once in the morning and once in the evening. So I don't know if that's the one you mean. If you overuse the blue inhaler, it can cause palpitations. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. No, mm, no. No, I haven't, to be honest. Symbicort is an inhaler that used twice a day, or as prescribed, and it prevents an asthma attack coming on, rather than uh, as a reliever, as the blue inhaler does. Just a suggestion, lovey. Oh, I get those blooming scam messages. Oh, uh, so that's a suggestion from me. Yeah, I think you mean the brown one. If you do, then I am already using that. I have already got that one uh, that I use, so uh, thanks for asking me that. <clears throat> on another subject, uh, I still get those blooming scam messages a lot too on the email. I had one the other day, wait, wanting my bank details. Yeah, right, she said. I absolutely loved the show last week, Chris. Fabulous. Thank you from Wendy. Yeah, we get those scam oh, emails. I, must, I get dozens of those a week now. Dozens and dozens of blooming scam uh, emails coming through all the time. Fed up with it all. But never mind. 
we just delete them and carry on with our sad, lonely, pathetic lives. Anyway, that's it from the show today. I'm going to go uh, get the recording back up online and then go and have my dinner. If you ever want to just listen to the show rather than watching as well, you can get the audio version of the show from iTunes. Simply type in United Kingdom Talk and you should be able to find the audio version of the show there. Subscribe completely free of charge or you can download it directly, usually within the live show finishing, within 20 minutes of the live show finishing. It goes up at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk united kingdom talk dot co dot uk i'll give you the email address once again chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk all right chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk thanks for watching and listening i'll see you again next week have a lovely weekend bye bye now